What's going on, Big Blue Nation? Will Turpin, UK super fan here. On today's video, we're going to preview Kentucky's big game. That's right, Tuesday night, Rupp Arena. For sole possession of first place in the SEC, as our Cats are going to do battle with the Alabama Crimson Tide. It's going to be a late one there, Tuesday night. Uh, 9 o'clock start time, Big Blue Nation. So, uh, you know, some of us may need to get a little nap in before the game. Uh, you know, if you're not, are you not excited now? I mean, three wins in a row. Wow, our team is, uh, you know, it's kept the momentum going. On Saturday down in Gainesville, I feel like we just we took another step in establishing our identity. You know, I t I've been talking about that on these videos the last, uh, you know, couple weeks. You've heard that that term, establishing our identity. You know, and right now uh, for Kentucky, that identity is. When you try to score the ball around the rim, there's going to be a UK Wildcat or two there to to alter, if not block your shot. And uh, you know that that's a thing that has caused uh, shooting percentages for opponents to go down. And it's it's been a big big difference in uh, you know just Kentucky's overall ability to slow down their opponents. And and we also we saw continued growth in ball movement. And playmaking, you know, our Cats, we had 18 assists on 35 made shots in that game Saturday. And uh, when you're watching the game Tuesday night against Bama, these are two areas to keep top of mind. Uh, you know, if we continue to alter shots at the pace that we're on, uh, you know, the last couple of weeks, and, uh, you know, we continue to move the ball like we have the last couple of weeks, you know, look out. Sky's the limit for this Kentucky team, and you know we're uh, you know we're still two months away from Big Blue Mad. I mean, from uh, March Madness. So I mean, we're, you're talking about a team that still has a lot of time to continue developing, but uh, we certainly look like we're on the right track. I mean, the floor just looks so much better. Uh, getting Keon back out there, he just stuffed the stat sheet the other day, and uh, you know. It, it, we certainly have some momentum going, but uh, so does the team that we're going to be playing Tuesday night, the Crimson Tide. And uh, here, let's let's get right to this Alabama Crimson Tide team. You know, first up, there you see John Petty Jr. Man, it feels like this guy's been at Alabama for ten years. He's a, he's one of those guys. You know, six five, hundred eighty four pounds, senior guard. Uh, you know, he's been a starter on this team since he walked on campus. You know, and. Uh, you know, Petty really. You know, we all know he impacts the game with his three-point shooting. I mean, he's hit he's hit ten three-pointers in a game twice in his first three years at Alabama. So, you know, you know, and, and by my calculations, I think he only needs like eight more threes to become the leading three-point shooter in the history of their university. So, you know, you simply can't let Petty uh, get in any kind of rhythm shooting the ball, or or it's going to be a long night. I mean, he, he flat out shoot the three when he gets it going, but it, but he's also a big-time leader, you know, and, you know, when you look at the tape on Alabama, this kid just makes winning plays down the stretch in every game I watch to get ready for this video. I mean, he can impact the game in so many ways besides just his three-point shooting, and, uh, you know, with that said, he's been a little cold shooting the ball lately, so uh, that in some ways that makes me a little nervous because, uh, you know, I hope it, I hope he stays cold for at least one more game, uh, you know, until uh, until they get out of Rupp Arena on Tuesday night. And uh, next up is a six six combo guard, a hundred ninety pound freshman, uh, Joshua Primo. And uh, you know, Coach Nate Oates he inserted Primo into the starting lineup about five games ago, and uh, Alabama ain't lost a game since the change. Uh, you know, he had a big breakout game uh, this past Saturday against Auburn. He had 22 points. He replaced uh, Javon Quinterly in the starting lineup. And, uh, you know, and he and Quinterly was one of Alabama's top scorers. But Quinterly, he, he had struggled on defense. And uh, and that really paved the way for Primo to, uh, to get on the floor. And, you know, he's a blue-chip prospect. I think ESPN uh, mock drafts had him somewhere as like a mid-first rounder already. So, you know, you know. So far this season, he's sort of just been finding his way. But last Saturday, you know, if that's any indication, Primo is, uh, you know, he's on his way to living up to the hype. And uh, you know, he's a guy that can really impact the game and can uh, fill it up if he gets going. You know, and next up we got, uh, you know, uh, leading scorer on the team, six three, two hundred pound sophomore, Jaden Shackelford. 
You know, he does. He like I said, he leads the team in scoring at about thirteen point one a game. He's just a pure scorer. Uh, you know, I think last year, you know, I think he was, I think he set the fourth all time uh, freshman scoring mark behind uh, uh, Colin Sexton and uh, a, a guy that some of you older fans may remember, James Hollywood Robinson. And Eddie Phillips, he was fourth all time on the freshman scoring list last year, and uh, you know he's really uh, picked up where he left off last year. You know he's just continuing to score the ball, and uh, you know one thing I'll say about this though, Kentucky's done a really good job recently of maximizing their length on defense and contesting perimeter shots and more consistently. And uh, I think this will be a huge key uh, Tuesday night is Kentucky getting out on these shooters. And getting their hands up in the air and contesting these shots—that's going to be a—that's going to be a big deal, because you know when you look there, Petty Junior, you know six, you know he's six five, you know Primo six six, Shackelford at six three. I mean, it's going to be some really good matchups there in the backcourt, uh, you know, and hopefully, like I said, Kentucky can, uh, uh, you know, can get out on these shooters and not let them get in a flow. And uh, next up is 6'8", 210-pound senior forward Herbert Jones. This is a bright young man. He's He's been a SEC academic honor roll all th first three uh, years in Tuscaloosa. And, you know, on the court, he does a little bit of everything. You know, uh, last year's game against Kentucky, he had 18 points, seven rebounds, four assists. And, uh, you know, he's just such an aggressive player. He's probably the guy that when I watch the tape on Bama – that sticks out the most. He he's really a glue guy. Uh, I mean, he's he's got his hands all in the passing lanes. You know, last season he was an All SEC uh, defensive performer, and and that's really what he does. I mean, he just his his hands and arms are always moving. Uh, I mean, his lateral quickness is is maybe unparalleled in the SEC. You know, he's just constantly on the floor diving for balls. Uh, and and really, uh, probably one of the best charge takers I've scouted all season. You know, he's right there in that short list. I mean, he is an elite charge taker, just a heady guy that just understands how to play the game, and and a guy that you want on the floor. You know, I mean, just he makes those. He and uh, Petty are the two guys that really stick out to me as the kind of guys that make winning plays. Uh, when you're in the last three minutes of the game, they understand situational basketball so well. And, uh, you know, just kind of keep that in mind. Petty and and, uh, and Jones, just two really, really high basketball IQ guys. And uh, rounding out the starting lineup here, we got a 6'10", 225-pound grad transfer from Yale, Jordan Bruner. Uh, you know, he was all Ivy League last season. Plays about 22, 23 minutes a game. Averages, you know, Nothing, nothing massive. Eight points, six boards a game, uh, and, and he, but he also does lead the team in shot blocks. So, uh, you know, he's the kind of guy down there in the paint that Kentucky's going to have to, to, you know, contend with down there. Uh, off the bench, uh, you know, we'll start with six six junior guard Keon Ellis. Uh, you know, he's a JUCO transfer, can flat out score the basketball. Uh, last season, he shot over fifty four percent on twos. Uh, a little over 40% on threes and uh, about 81% from the free throw line last season. And he's just another weapon that you've got to pay attention to in the game. Uh, you know, his minutes have went up the last few games uh, since Javon Quinterly has been out. Uh, like I said, Quinterly was a starter early in the year, and I did list him. Uh, up until five games ago, he was a starter. But then, uh, you know, like I said, uh, his defense, he was having some struggles there. Uh but, you know, he led this team in assists. He was scoring double digits a game and was, I think he still leads the team in assists and hadn't even played the last three games. So, you know, he was a big-time playmaker for uh, for Nate Oates' team. But, like I say, he just struggled defensively, and that caused him to lose his starting job there to uh, Joshua Primo. And Primo probably does have more upside as a player, and uh, we saw that Saturday against Auburn. Uh, no word yet if uh, Quinterly's going to be back for the game uh, Tuesday night in Rupp, so we'll just kind of have to – you know, keep our eyes open and ears open on that to see uh, because Quinterly can make an impact on the game. After that, I think there's a significant drop off for Alabama. Uh, you know, they got a six nine senior forward there, Alex Reese, and a six eight junior forward there, James Rojas. And like I said, to me, this is where the drop off is for Alabama. You know, Kentucky's much deeper. 
should be able to dominate bench scoring. And, uh, you know, if Bama gets into any foul trouble early, that could really benefit Kentucky because, you know, really I just think our 6th, 7th, 8th, and ninth guys off the bench are just much better than Alabama's. Uh, but Bama does have a start, uh, you know, a, a really good starting five. They really do, and uh, and the you know, this should be a heck of a game. You know, you got Bama; they've rolled off five straight wins, and uh, and our Cats have you know won their last three games. So, you know, you got two teams that are getting better and better every game. Uh, you know, Nate Oates is establishing a winning culture at Alabama, and and you know their team is really buying in to that whatever it takes to win a game mentality. You know, early in the year he had some, you know, some issues with a couple of guys that had some bad attitudes. Didn't suspend them, but could have. And uh, made some changes in the starting lineup. And, uh, you know, he basically played the five guys that were bought in to winning and getting it done. And like I said, with it, you know, especially this season with no exhibition season, it's taken these coaches, it's taken Nate Oates and John Calipari just a little bit longer to figure out exactly the right combinations and the right spots. But Alabama and Kentucky are both teams that are, are trending in a positive direction and uh, getting better and better every game. And you can see it uh, on the film. It sticks out. Uh, you know, one, one of the things that jumps off the screen when I scouted Bama is their effort. I mean, it's top-notch and it's relentless. Uh, Kentucky's not played a team all year long that plays as hard for 40 minutes as Bama does. And that's going to be a big key is Kentucky matching that intensity on both ends of the floor because uh, that's what Alabama's going to do. Uh, you know, if we look at Kentucky, you know, what's what's really fueled this change is, uh, you know, a couple, really, I think three things. Uh, Kentucky's help side defense has been absolutely spectacular the last three games. Uh, you know, not only are we blocking a lot of shots at the rim and altering a lot of shots around the rim, but, you know, what what this has really done is this has caused teams, you know, like we said earlier in the video, their shooting percentage has gone down. You know, we saw that against Florida where we actually played with a double-digit lead most of the second half uh, because Florida just had a hard time scoring, you know, against our defense. You know, the second big key that's allowed us, I think, to win these last three games is uh, not only are we knocking down more shots, but our shot selection as a whole has been much, much better. And, uh, you know, the reason for this is Kentucky spacing on the floor uh, is night and day better than it was early on in the year. Uh, better spacing has created better shots. And once we started making some outside shots, then what we saw is the defense had to start, you know, getting out on the shooters. And uh, basically what that did is that uh, opened up for more driving lanes uh, and more passing lanes into the post that just simply weren't there before. You know, we saw, you know, our Kentucky guards was having trouble even throwing the ball into the post, you know. And, uh, you know, now we're able to throw that ball in there to Saar and Jackson, and they actually have a little bit of room to operate down there now. And, uh, you know, teams were just clogging up the paint with defenders and it was it was nearly impossible to even throw the ball in there, and that that's why, you know, we 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 saw Sar, you know, who was a, you know, a, a great weapon for Wake Forest last season, an All ACC performer, and he came here, and everybody's like, what in the world's wrong with it? Well, that was part of the problem. It was it was floor spacing, and uh, you know, the paint was so crowded that he had no no room to operate. We couldn't even hardly throw the ball into the paint, you know, and uh, so you know. That's something that's it's going to be real fun to watch, you know, and, and really it's let's watch the chemistry develop over these next few weeks. You know, now that we have Keon Brooks on the floor, and, you know, and boy, what a treat that was Saturday. You know, and, you know, Kentucky's now got nine different guys that's helped us win a game uh, just in the last, uh, you know, week and a half. You know, depending on what we need, we've got nine guys there that can help us. You know, and the best part is, is, you know, we should be getting Terrence Clark back, you know, here in the next, uh, you know, week or two. And he may be the best athlete on the team. And then, you know, we're looking at having 10 guys on any given night that can give you positive minutes. You know, what looked like the sky was falling just a couple of weeks ago now looks like a team that's going to be fun to watch and develop over the next few months. And that's what I really see with our team is, uh, you know, they're just getting better. They're just, they're improving and uh you know, like I said, the the added, 
you know, floor spacing that Dante Allen has given us. You know, Devin Askew shooting the ball better from outside. You know, if if we need those extra fouls or rebounds, you know, Lance Ware's played quality minutes. And really, it's just going to be interesting to see over the next few weeks. You know, Isaiah Jackson's another guy that's really looked better, uh, you know, now that the floor is a little bit more open. You know, he's doing so much, you know, playing about 20, 21, 22 minutes a game. But he's rebounding the ball, blocking shots. He's getting steals down low, deflections. Uh, he's just been so active in those minutes. And, uh, you know, on offense, if we could get him to just to slow down just a hair. You know, there's several times he's caught the ball in excellent position with a serious uh, advantage down low. And he's just kind of rushed things a little bit. Or he's not saw the fact that he's got a guy cutting on the baseline from the weak side. And, you know, that's something that the young player will, you know, I think we'll, you'll see continued improvement there. And if we can continue to get Jackson to improve on offense, let Keon keep, you know, working his way back and working his way back and hopefully getting to a point where we can get his minutes up closer to 30. Um, you know, if Dante can, you know, provide us another 20 or so minutes off the bench, with solid defense uh, and continuing to, you know, even when he's not shooting the ball, his defender is having to stick him like glue. And that that's just spacing that floor so much better. When you see Dante sitting over on that corner, you usually see his defender close, close by, and they don't want to leave him open because, you know, Dante's the kind of guy that's already shown. You know, he can knock down four or five threes and flip a game in a heartbeat. And uh, he did that really Saturday. He only had uh, two threes Saturday. But they both come as soon as he checked in. And our offense was a little stagnant early on. And uh, he took like a, you know, a 6-5 game and turned it into a, you know, I think a 13-6 to six game. And Kentucky never looked back Saturday. You know, we, we kept saying it over and over and over. And we kept believing in it. Better days were coming, Big Blue Nation. And, uh, you know, they're here. It's a big time game Saturday, uh, with uh, you know at this point two of the hottest teams not just in the SEC but you know Kentucky moved up about thirteen spots in the Ken Palm the other day uh, for any of you that put any stock in that and uh, you know you got two two of the legit hottest teams uh, you know in the country going right now you know and uh, so it, it's a big time game for Kentucky to keep this momentum rolling like I said win or lose though Tuesday night I still think that. You know, if we can continue to see improvement, I mean, Bama's a good team. Uh, you know, th th they got some uh, big-time scorers on that team, and, uh, you know, it it's going to be a handful for Kentucky. But, we, like I said, we, our cats have scratched and clawed. you got to be proud of the effort. You know, as a Big Blue uh, fan, you've got to love and be proud of the fact that, you know, when the whole sky was falling and, you know, and and everything, you know, all the negativity, oh, we can't win this, we're tired of the one duns, you know, the fire cow on Twitter, you know, when all that stuff was going on, these guys kept grinding, these guys kept believing in each other, they kept growing and becoming more united as a team, and, and we saw it Saturday, and we, I hope we continue to see it Tuesday night. Guys, I appreciate all the support so much for these videos I've been doing. It's blown my mind. Um... Uh, how much you guys have been liking and sharing my videos. Uh, you know, like I said, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button. It helps us. It gets that YouTube algorithm to work in our favor. And, uh, you know, it gets YouTube to share our videos with more and more of the Big Blue Nation. And like I said, I appreciate all y'all's support. And, uh, you know, feel free to comment on the video. Any Anything that you want, you know. You know, like I said, I looked at hopefully try to, you know, improve these videos as the season goes on. And uh, it's such a blessing just to get to do them and interact with you guys. And uh, like I said, we'll be back here, uh, you know, with a, with a follow-up video after Alabama. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next video. Go Big Blue!